optimization, maximization, boat projects, DIY projects. What do all these things have in common? Well, that's the subject of today's podcast. Hi, I'm Nico Waters, and welcome to the Boat Galley Podcast. I'm talking about what I call the DIYer's dilemma, and it's figuring out how to maximize one option for optimizing others, and you'll understand after you listen. Today's episode of the Boat Galley Podcast is sponsored by MantisMarine.com, maker of the Mantis Anchor, now available in models with and without a roll bar. Proven to set reliably in the most challenging bottoms, the Mantis Anchor digs like no other, making anchoring safer and boating more enjoyable. I can tell you we were really happy to be sitting to our Mantis M2 during the 35 knot blow we had for the last few days here in the Bahamas. It was pretty spectacular. Mantis Marine brings to market practical, durable, and affordable marine products, including anchoring gear, scuba diving accessories, and a rechargeable waterproof headlamp for hands-free lighting. Now, there's a solar charging navigation light. Visit mantismarine.com and see for yourself. Once you have optimized or maximized, or what's the difference between the two anyway? And this whole thing was spurred a little bit by a blog that I read recently by Seth Godin. And it was a blog about optimization versus maximization. He says, the work of optimization is finding the best set of trade-offs, while maximization seeks the solution that ranks highest for just one goal. And I guess he might not agree with me, but I do think that when you're doing any boat project, you've got to look at both of those things together. We're pretty committed DIY people. You might have gotten that idea listening to the podcast or reading any of the blogs. And yes, this stems largely from the fact that Jeremy, my husband, is a trained engineer and he can do almost anything. But it's also, it's also really shored up by the fact that we're pretty frugal. And in general, going the DIY route has the potential, and I'm about to talk about potential in just a second, it has the potential to save you a whole lot of money and allows for you to think about optimization. I have to give you a little bit of a warning because you do definitely need to know yourself and your limitations. If it was me, the solo DIYer, I would have the potential to cost myself a whole lot of money because I'd probably screw up something disastrously. I've got decent skills in the kitchen. I've got decent skills in a classroom, but I don't have a whole lot of decent skills mechanically. I also get super frustrated when I don't do a good job with something. So taking the time to learn in an overnight cram session would not work for me. So know your limitations. And, and maybe that's part of the optimization and maximization thing. But to me, when you're thinking about boat projects, you're looking at some combination of time, money, and quality. And if Seth Godin talks about optimization as finding the best set of trade-offs within those three, in order to find the best set of trade-offs, I think you have to figure out which one of those things is the sticking point. Because you're probably not likely to hit the magic trifecta. Time might be the thing that you're most worried about because you have plans to go sailing with friends or there's a passage you're trying to make and the weather dictates that you better be ready to go then. Maybe it's because you start realizing, as we have definitely recently, that we're not getting any younger. Or maybe it's because the yard where you've been staying for a while and working on the boat, they're about to quadruple and you just can't quite stomach that. Money might be the sticking point because you don't have any more left. You've already spent more than you wanted to. Maybe you bought a second boat you weren't expecting to. Hmm, who could that be? There are other claims on your limited dollars because generally money is about choices. But Maybe the choice is that you've got other things you need to spend it on. Quality might be the thing that you're most concerned about because it's a matter of safety. Because what you're working on is a precious labor of love and you've got pride in the finish of it. And whichever one you're maximizing, whichever one is the sticking point for you, it becomes the lens 
through which you evaluate projects, even when you're doing it yourself. Because, as I said, you're unlikely to hit that magic trifecta, and one of them is going to be the important part. You can have something take less time and cost less, but it might be poorly executed because you just have to get it done, slap, dash, boom, get it finished. You can have something cost less and be high quality but take a stupid amount of time. You can have something super high quality in a short amount of time and it might cost the moon. Pick your poison. For us, as I might have alluded to a little bit earlier, we're really, really cognizant of the time factor because in our opinion, it's the one aspect that you cannot access more of. Once time is gone, it's gone. Which is why sometimes even the most committed DIYer opts for hiring a project out. And yes, it will cost more. I can pretty much guarantee if you are a skilled DIYer, hiring a project out will cost more than doing it yourself. Chances are it's not going to be done to the same standard that you would. Mostly because when you hire a project out, the person who you're hiring is doing just what you ask them to do. Whereas when you do a project yourself, you might see the little side project. That's why things often take longer when you're doing it yourself. You see the side project and you take care of it right then and there. You might do a little more sanding to get that part done. But when you hire it out, it'll get done. And there's just not enough time in the day to do everything that needs to be done. At least not if we want to go cruising sometime in the next decade. And for us, going cruising is the optimizing that we're looking for. So something's got to give. It's not that we've got endless money to throw at boat projects, and it's not that we don't care about the quality, but it's just that sometimes time is more expensive than cash. And part of the problem with hiring out, and it's the part of the problem I just talked about a little bit with any boat project, is that it's rarely a simple endeavor. Way, way, way too often, and you'll hear cruisers talk about this, and we've laughed about it a few times, what seems obvious and uncomplicated turns out to be a rabbit hole or a rabbit warren of and then. This is really hard when you're doing the work yourself. It's hard to rein yourself in and to focus on just what you need to do, especially sometimes you don't want to do that because other things that are important crop up. I think about our recent thing on mischief when we were just going to refinish the rudder cheeks and it became very clear that they were rotten and totally needed to be replaced. So Jeremy needed to build new ones himself. But it's even harder when you're trying to hire somebody else to do the work. If we had hired somebody to do those rudder cheeks, they probably would have said, oh, yeah, well, I see that there's rot and uh, I'm going to quote whatever it would be to replace those rudder cheeks. And we would have said, oh my God, no. And so they would have just refinished it or they might not have even said anything. Who knows? But no matter how many times a yard has done a given project, they've probably never done it on your own boat. And even if the yard or even if you have done that same project on a sister ship, well, Maybe if the actual boat yard where the actual boat was built, you're hiring to do the work, there might be some guarantee, hopefully, that they're working at least a little less blindly. But there are enough differences, even in the same model boat built in the same factory, that each project is unique. You can't even reliably create the same cabinetry from one side of the boat to the other without a lot of measuring and templating. So choosing which boat project to outsource, if you get to that point, can be a very important factor in the quest for optimization, which, as I said, for us is going cruising. Some projects should be relatively straightforward and relatively might need to be underscored. Others, by their very nature, are more challenging. Like when we were working on a new galley for Calypso, if we had tried to hire somebody else to build that, it would have been impossible. Because the number of iterations, the number of decision points that we had during the build, the endless measuring, templating, cutting, fitting, trimming, refitting, the number of times we took and stood there with cardboard in places to lean over to see if we could make it fit, trying to explain what we needed to somebody else, when we didn't really quite know exactly what we wanted, 
That would have been a nightmare for everybody involved. The yard wouldn't have liked it. We wouldn't have liked it. Not a good plan. Here's the thing, though, is that even when you're outsourcing a pretty straightforward project, oversight is required. And this can be really, really frustrating. Because you spend good money to hire a professional to do a job, but then you're the one who needs to make sure that they've done the job correctly? Yeah, you have to know something to be able to hire a job out. Boat ownership is not a hands-off affair. It's not like handing your car over to a mechanic who has likely done the same thing a million times. There's definitely a fine line, though, between micromanaging and oversight, and my bet is that what you consider regular oversight might feel like micromanaging to whoever it was that you hired, and that's not great. There does happen to be a fourth factor in this whole hiring out conversation. Trust. Anytime you hire somebody to do the work on your boat, you're trusting that they're going to do at least a competent job. You've done the research. You've chosen the contractor based on their reputation. Can't you just trust that and go on your merry way? Unfortunately, no. Regardless of the yard or the contractor or the reputation or whatever, the thing is that you, as the boat owner, you're ultimately responsible for all the work done on your boat. And you might be saying, oh, wait, but there's a warranty. There's a guarantee. And maybe if you are a weekend sailor, or a person who uses their boat and goes back to the same marina all the time, a warranty might help you. But it's not going to help you if something goes wrong when you're 10 miles offshore. And it certainly doesn't do you a whole lot of good once you've sailed away and shifted to a new location. What we have found over and over and over again is that we are most satisfied with work that we've done ourselves. Learning to let go, to accept good enough, it's hard enough. It's a hard enough dilemma when it's done by ourselves. But it's really extra hard when we've paid a big amount of money to a professional to do the work. Because nobody is going to work on your boat or take the same care with her as you will. Nobody. Doing work on our boats ourselves is our way of optimizing, although... If the optimization is got to get out cruising, that time factor is real. And at some point, you just need to go cruising. I can't wait to share an anchorage with you. It's been really fun this particular season to have people come up and say hi. I can't wait to share an anchorage with you where we can just toast to our incredible good fortune at being able to live this amazing lifestyle challenges and joys all together. Thank you so much for listening to the Boat Galley podcast. We love hearing from our listeners. We love it when you share us with your friends. We love it when you let us know that we have helped you make boat life better, even just a tiny little bit. Have the most spectacular week. <laughs>